All right, team, welcome back to After Hours. We're going to have a great show for you today. We're going to talk about altcoins that you need to be buying or maybe some things that we are buying as the altcoin market is showing a lot of good opportunity right now. A lot of you guys were discussing about Casper showing a new low today. The best buying opportunity for Casper was today, and we're going to talk about that along with some other altcoins. We're also going to be talking about a secret Bitcoin roundtable potentially coming up with a Biden admin potentially going there. This all potentially is leaked today, so we'll talk about it very briefly. And we're going to discuss Coinbase smart wallets, should you use it or not. And at the end, we're going to do that giveaway that we promised you last week. This is After Hours in Maddie, I want to get directly into talking about Bitcoin, talking about altcoins here, because this is going to be the best part of today's show, in my opinion, talking about this, because there is just so much opportunity across the board right now. I'll tell you before the show, EOS, Polkadot, DAG, Zcash, all these altcoins are showing tremendous buying opportunities right now, like bottom of accumulation, moving lower right now. We saw that big spike in Bitcoin dominance and the whole altcoin market completely took a nosedive, right? And so there's a lot of buying opportunity across the board right now. I did want to mention before I hand it off to you to discuss some of these like 10x crypto buying opportunities that people have right now. I did want to talk about Casper. Today, Maddie, Casper showed the best buying opportunity of all time, right? Today, right. we are big Casper fans here. We buy Casper. A lot of my net worth is in Casper. And so today is a day where I'm looking, I'm scraping for pennies to buy Casper, right? So showing a 2.1 cent Casper, right? Maddie talked about last week. Hey, team, maybe don't even DCA Casper right now because we have the staking opportunity. So maybe throw down a giant limit order. If you have it available, of course, you know, if you, you know, are getting your paycheck and you need a DCA, okay, fine. But if you have the cash available, if you have that cash bag available, like we talk on the consistent investor strategy, Maddie, you guys could throw that down in Casper right now. Go to Casper.live, delegate that, and get 12.44% in Casper. I would say that's a success if you are a Casper fan and something you should be looking for in opportunities like this to strategize your way to enhancing your portfolio. And so that's what I want Maddie to do here. Maddie, break down to the team, go to the charts right now, show the team where they should be looking across the board for some of the best buying opportunities. I say 10x, but best buying opportunities that they could be either DCAing right now or maybe even potentially getting ready for a limit order. Yeah, um, you know, I know that obviously people want to buy into momentum. And of course, you know, as we do enter, you know, some of these more bullish periods and we start to make higher lows, we want to be more tactical. We want to make sure that we're buying on the pullback. We're buying into that momentum. And again, buying on the pullback, not buying into the impulse. I know a lot of you guys impulsively like to buy into the impulses. Um, you know, in with Casper here, you know, we've built this range. You know, this is the same, you know, basically low that we established in June of 22. Um, it's been a really, really long range in here. I actually picked up a couple hundred thousand Casper here today uh, mm -hmm. off of a limit order. Uh, you know, again, I'm, I put my money where my mouth is like, you know, we all wait until we actually see some price action that we like. And then we're like, damn, I wish I had put more in. And like, I'm just going to put my money where my mouth is. I'm so numb to a lot of this price action now. It does not emotionally affect me. Um, you know, I don't even like look at my portfolio on a regular basis. Like I know some people check multiple times a day. I don't like I look at the charts because the structures are going to tell me everything I need to know about decision making. Um, how much I'm up or down is not going to like, you know, help me along in any capacity. Um, you know, so for me, you know, I, I bought a couple hundred thousand of that, stake that up today. Um, like we said, we are earning 12.44% on that. Um, you know, when you look at, you know, where we are currently, even up into some of these uh, retracement areas, right? It's about a 9x opportunity just into that 22 set mark here on Casper. Remember, the all time high is over a dollar. It's around a dollar 36 over here on Casper. So if we were to even see the previous all time high filled, getting a couple hundred thousand on Casper here, right? We're looking at dollar 36, dollar 38. That's about a 58x opportunity. Now, again, there's a variety of ways you can play this, plenty of rotational ops. You guys can see all over the chart here. There's a lot of, you know, support and resistance levels. You know, you guys can extract as much or as little as you want. When you look at even here, current market to the top of the range here, it's about a 200% move, right? So that's just like us not even getting a breakout move. That's just us revisiting the top of the range here. It's about a 200% opportunity. You look at Bitcoin from current market up to $120,000, you're not getting anywhere close to that return, right? Now, I'm not saying that there are one for one, very different assets, but you know, I'm putting my money where my mouth is and I spook, uh, scooped up some uh, pretty aggressive little bag here of Casper to kind of just lower the average a little bit more. Wasn't unhappy at about a 2.7, 2.6 you know, cent average before. So this just brought that down even more. Um, obviously, I still like Zcash. Zcash is just building this 
this nice accumulative basin here, I truly believe that this is going to be one of the most overlooked bottoming structures in crypto right now. Um, you know, again, it always looks like this, you know, maybe you do a quick little weird wicking thing, but like, I'm pretty sure we've built a strong floor here on Zcash. I also like Helium a lot. I like HNT here. We are slightly below that zone. Um, if we do drop uh, more aggressively, if the whole market turns over and we drop down to like the 230 region, I will also do what I did with Casper and be very aggressive with that position and open that up a little bit more aggressively. Um, again, I am looking at $88 plus here on Helium uh, for some of those targets. So even looking at current market up into that first target, it's about a 25X in there. Um, you know, there's a lot of you know assets that I like. Uh, you know, a lot of them are still in a, a very lucrative spot. VeChain's probably going to be the last one I give you guys here. Um, you know, VeChain up into the 618 is about a 5X, up into the 1.618 here is about a 14, 15X. Um, and we, I think we are still just conducting like a beautiful elongated back test into that breakout zone. You know, I, I think that we just get so excited about the breakouts and we just think it has to keep going because they're just, you know, everyone thinks about the very short period in crypto where like it's just straight impulses for several months at a time. But they forget that like back testing a multi hundred day, you know, accumulation zone is actually super normal and healthy behavior. And it doesn't have to, have to happen all at once. It doesn't have to be just one test. It could be multiple tests. Um, and the market's going to do what the market's going to do. The second you think that you have control over the market, you are going to start losing more money, right? You're going to start making irrational decisions. So, Stick to the assets you like, guys. Continue to lower those averages and then take your foot off the gas once we, you know, start popping off, right? That's the easy part. That's the fun part. That's enjoying the fruits of our labor. Now's the time we do the hard work. And Maddie, one more thing before we go any further here. I did see people online on Twitter and saying that XRP is decoupling right now. What is going on with XRP? Can you give us a quick peek right here? Oh, the Riddlers must have oh, been right. Oh, Maddie, I meant, I meant, what's the narrative, Maddie? What's the narrative pushing price up? That's what I meant. My bad. You, you know, it's not a crazy pump in here to guy, today, guys. You know, when you look at what's happening, you have this big range that's been built. We've held this 47, 50 cent region for years. I mean, literally years. You look at this, you know, turn into resistance, flip it back into support, back into resistance, back into support. It's a multi year pivot zone for XRP. So, you know, just seeing a bounce off of this is not that crazy. We do see this behavior in other alts sometimes where you're having, you know, the whole market has a down day and you'll have the one or two alts that are still going up like sometimes it's a meme coin sometimes I've, I've seen render do it a couple times where the market's had a down day and render's been up five six percent yeah. um you know we're just bouncing off a key support zone here i don't think the great decoupling is coming i don't think xrp rips 500 percent in a day while the rest of the market's you know in a downturn like come on guys like i know that it's fun to fantasize but like it's just market behavior. It's just market structure. Like it's, you know, it's just doing what the charts do. You're bouncing off a key level in here. You can see even uh, since we first threw a wick down here on August 17 on this daily chart uh, in 2023, we've basically been maintaining this level since then with just obviously some wicks below that. But all daily candle closes have been above this 47 cent mark. So, you know, just us seeing bulls defend that level, not that surprising to me. I like that, Maddie, And that's funny. I'm glad you pointed that out because I am so tired of this. And this is because of the way I was conditioned in crypto market, just being like, you know, emotionless. And all these people on the internet, I feel like I can't even go on Twitter. Like this week in Twitter has already been so bad with everyone spewing. Like I was telling you about the, uh, the guy at the SEC uh, going away and everyone reading into that. And it's, it's really got to do with, looks like a change in career and wants to take care of his son for the summer. So it's like, and with that, like everyone has to pull a, a giant narrative out of that. And everyone's just like, loves to read into things. And I'm really happy with you. I'm, ha I'm happy DCAing and happy, you know, not looking into every crevice of the internet. Because once you do, you go down weird rabbit holes that sometimes lead to nothing. I won't, I don't want to say sometimes it mo most often leads to nothing. Like there's nothing that's going to come out with this sec guy leaving the sec. And, uh, there's nothing that's going to come from that's going to be like, Oh, this is, you know, this is this, and this is going to help crypto. Like, no, this guy's just leaving. Cause honestly, working at the sec is probably very degrading and I don't think it's a <laughs> great, great career choice, just the way it's heading right now. So team, before we go any further though, I do want to give a couple announcements, a couple of things that you should be looking out for first, become a crypto charge member, click the pinned link in the comment section down below, take you to our website. And we, me and Maddie, Maddie and I recorded Saturday. We recorded the latest, version of the consistent investor strategy. Maddie went in for, I want to say it was about 55 minutes, 50 to 55 minutes. And it was well detailed Thursday and Friday. I was, you know, Maddie sent it to me. I was looking over it and it looked phenomenal. And I was so blown away that he put that much work into it. And it's something you guys aren't going to want to miss out. Like 
the consistent investor strategy originally was just like, okay, how should you be dividing up your funds? This time around, Maddie's talking about cryptos in it, talking about what, what cryptos to be buying or asset classes or not asset classes, verticals, uh, sectors, verticals in crypto that you should be looking at. And looking at the Fibonacci's, looking at the technicals, way more descriptive than the other one, Maddie. I think the other one was like 10 minutes, and now this one's going to be yep. 55 minutes. So, team, that's going to come out this Friday, the 21st at 2.30 p.m. at CryptoCharge, CryptoCharge.com. So, team, make sure you join us up there and check that out. Maddie put a lot of time into that, and it's something I've been looking forward to. And I know you guys, a part of the CryptoCharge community, have been looking forward to. So if you're not a part of the crypto charge, crypto charge community, make sure you join us there. And of course, we're going to do the giveaway at, and at the end of the show. All right, Maddie, let's get into some actual topics here. And I actually like talking about Biden recently. I love talking politics with Maddie off camera. And this is where <laughs> we're going to start it today. This was leaked. Biden admin to attend Bitcoin roundtable with key congressional officials in DC. So Congressman Ro Khanna is organizing a Bitcoin and blockchain roundtable in DC in early July. So that's 15 to 20 days away. His office describes it describes it as the most significant meeting between policymakers and innovation leaders in blockchain to date one. So Matty I've been talking with you a lot off camera because um, this this like weird, all these political figures right now are jumping on the idea of crypto, which is fine. I'm here for it. I'm here for the narrative portion of it. Are we going to see adoption? That is to be determined. Are we, are we going to see like regulation step in? That is to be determined. All right. So here's like a quick little spiel of where we've come from. Right. So Donald Trump, 2021, anti-crypto. It's not American enough. So Trump was bearish on crypto, right? This year, Trump has now turned tides very pro, saying he's pro-Bitcoin, pro-crypto, anti-Elizabeth Warren, all right? Maddie, now let's talk about the Democratic side if you want to split up the sides here. So now we see Biden, we saw Biden veto a bill earlier, just like a couple weeks ago or a month ago. And now we're seeing Biden getting an admin at this leaked potential you know, Bitcoin mini conference here. And we saw a, a weird backlash, I was telling you before the show, this weird backlash that everyone gave the Biden administration when they vetoed that bill. Can you provide some color to this? Because I don't feel like I'm the only one seeing this. Yeah, so the recent bill was a bipartisan bill um, and, you know, aimed to give a little bit of clarity to the crypto space, um, kind of uh, uh, was going like, to allow for these financial institutions to hold crypto assets on their balance sheet, which technically they're legally right now not, not able to do, at least not very easily. We've talked many times about how if you want to get registered with the SEC as someone who works in the DLT space or blockchain space, it's nearly impossible to fill out the forms that they want you to fill out because they, they don't fit the the you know conditions of, of what this new technology is. Um, you know, it would be like imagine trying to describe all the parts of your current car uh, to the DMV, um, but the forms were based on when we had, you know, cars like Model Ts, you know, back from the 19th. 1920s. Like it would just be a very complicated process uh, for us to try to get that same vehicle registered. So a lot of it has to do with that. A lot of it has to do with the rulemaking uh, on the SEC side, not wanting to you know uh, relinquish this chokehold that the SEC has on the industry. Um, you know, and, and Biden's basically you know blanket reasoning for for wanting to deny this uh, was saying that you know there wasn't sufficient uh, ability for financial institutions to prevent against fraud for consumers but uh, we all know that's not true we were talking on our show previously looking at you know just some of the big boys out there Wells Fargo you know Chase uh, and how much they paid in penalties and just even specifically for violating consumer protections uh, and it's in the billions right and it was over trillions of dollars I believe for collective penalties paid so you know we all know that it's it's a BS reason same with the with the uh, SEC you know denying these spot ETFs forever you know oh you can't protect you know investors it's, you know it's not enough fraud prevention um but you know the reality is it, it's more about political gain it's about you know kicking the can down the road letting other you know innovators push ahead um and of course these financial institutions don't want this overhaul overnight they don't want that friction taken out of the system um you know they want that friction because they benefit and they you know make a lot of money from all the friction that's in the system now so if you guys think that there aren't all these lobbyists pocketing you know are putting a bunch of money in these you know politicians pockets to to make sure that this you know uh is a uncomfortable process you know, you're, you're sorely mistaken. Maddie, this is a very, I'm going to tread very lightly here because we had a conversation last week about this and it was, um, it can get very explosive, very quick talking mm -hmm. about Trump and Biden. And the thing I want to point to right now is when Trump in 20, 2020 
was actually, no, 2019, excuse me, was trying to get TikTok banned and that fell through. And now we see Biden trying to get TikTok banned. All right. And so now this year, Trump comes out and says, oh, well, we don't we don't really need TikTok banned. It's like, well, why, why the change of messaging here? It's like, what do you mean? You were the one that was trying to ban TikTok before. So it's right. like I'm seeing and this is where the explosiveness parts. I'm seeing a lot of flip flop right now. Yeah. And I was telling you before the show, Maddie, it just feels like a popularity contest. It's like I want to win. I want to get elected into office and I'm and I'm going to do anything by any means necessary. I'll do that, you know. One would say Trump is not as explosive as he was in 2016 right now. He's very more moderate. He's on a whole media tour right now where it, it looks like a completely different person talking, you know? And so you can take that however you want to. What I'm trying to say here is that these people have reasons and the reasons are is they want to get elected and they're going right. to do anything they want to do that. They will talk about crypto and to get the the poll here. And that's what this is what I get from Biden now. Now Biden wants to hop in here. And it's the same thing, you know, Ron DeSantis, you now he's RFK, all these people were very outspoken about being pro Bitcoin and anti C B D C. You know, these people you know, I just I, I just get frustrated as I get older because I feel like these people don't have our best interests, Maddie. And I feel like they just want to win. And their version of winning is getting into office. You know, am I the only one that feels that way or, is, or you too? No, I, I, I think that it's it's quite apparent. Um, you know, in my early 20s, I was, you know, very easily uh, somebody who you know, engaged in that inflammatory behavior. I wanted to have hard party lines. I uh, I just wanted to have a sense of political identity. And uh, instead of doing a lot of critical thinking for myself and, you know, looking at things from a policy perspective, looking at things from, you know, how they actually affect society, you know, uh, I had a very different approach. So, you know, now that I especially that I've been through several elections as an adult, watching them through and through, um, you know, seeing what happened with, with Trump, you know, Trump versus Hillary, it's crooked Hillary, it's sleepy Joe Biden, right? Like, it's always, you know, just a different soundbite and everyone feels like they're, they're doing the right thing. Um, and it goes for both sides, too. Everyone likes to flip flop and they do not have your best interests at heart. And when it comes to policy and, you know, when you track things like the economy, you track things like crypto um, and this is, you know, your bread and butter of what you do, you're very conscious of what everybody has done positively or negatively for the space. You don't forget those things, regardless of, at least you shouldn't, regardless of where you sit on the political spectrum. So I remember specifically Donald Trump coming on CNBC for a phone interview and called Bitcoin a scam out to debase the US dollar and basically called crypto and Bitcoin un-American because it was, you know, this this attempt to, you know, uh, hijack the American economy. Um, but, you know, it, it's just complete nonsense, you know, and then he flip flops now because Biden has this very clear, you know, anti stance, especially with this most recent bill that really wasn't going to, you know, ruin the financial system. We were just trying to take steps to, you know, define custody, allow people to potentially, you know, buy and sell assets even through their regu regular financial institutions. Um, so, you know, again, it, Big picture here, you sit down any of these guys, you sit down Donald Trump, you sit down Joe Biden, and you put them at this round table we were discussing, and you ask them some deep technical questions, even of, you know, how does proof of work, you know, operate? Uh, what is distributed ledger technology? Neither of them could give you any sort of comprehensive answer. So I want you guys to take that away from this is like, I don't, you know, we're not politically charged here. We don't believe that, you know, either of these people have your best interests at heart. Both of them are going to pander uh, to whatever audience they think is going to put them in the seat for the next four years. Well said, Maddie. I, I can't say I really disagree with anything you just said there. And last thing, just to cap this off, and I'm not going into this topic, but just to like kind of take it a step forward here, just to say like, you know, like Trump was the guy calling out Marco Rubio in 2015 from taking money from a particular person. And now he will be taking money from that same person this year. You know, so it's like the Trump that we once knew that was like, I'm not taking money from nobody has now fallen. So it's like, you know, team, these people, you know, are, will they help crypto? I hope so. Because other than that, like, I don't feel like they have my best interest at heart as a American. Right. Maddie, let's talk about <laughs> something not politics here. Let's right. talk about a new era in crypto wallets. The smart wallet is here. And Coinbase's smart wallets kick off the next chapter for Coinbase Wallet, revolutionizing the on-chain experience by simplifying onboarding, eliminating network fees, and removing recovery phrases. It provides seamless, gasless transactions and cross-app portability, aiming to bring uh, a billion users on chain. And Maddie, when I was going through this, this looks very easy for people that are my parents. You can sign up on the internet. Or you can use, you know, your Apple ID. You can use your, your Google Chrome and sign up using a biometric. And that biometric allows you in. Maddie, what is your thoughts on this? Because we were talking before the show, and you gave me this ledger example. And it's like, it's like, why not use a ledger? Like, why use this? Right. Give me, give me some clarity here. 
Um, you, you know, the, the main reason that, first of all, the, the big proposition value here is adoption, right? Um, unfortunately, right. even though I'm a purist through and through when it comes to self-custody, I've explained to him blue in the face. And that's a big part of the uh, section I talked about in the consistent investor strategy was, you know, you know, hey, here's everything about purchasing. Here's the strategy. Here's how we exit. But let's talk about also, you know, exiting and, and some of the flexibility you have with, you know, a self-custody solution. Um, you know, you're just going to have a lot of people that don't want to ever have to do any more work than is absolutely necessary. So um, if we can remove some of those barriers to entry uh, and you can make it simple to sign up through, you know, programs you were already familiar with and you like, uh, that will bring a new wave of people on. Now, those seed phrases are being stored on that physical device. So that opens up like a little bit of vulnerability with your device itself, right? And uh, a lot of people are not careful with their phones, right? You know, as much as I, you guys like to believe that you are, a lot of you guys download apps that you probably shouldn't be downloading. Uh, you guys raw dog the internet. I know most of you do. You do not use a VPN, which is absolutely nuts to me. Like it is 2024 and you guys know what's going on out there, which, you know, all of this like logging of information. You're like, I can't believe I got this ad. I'm like, I can, I can believe you got that ad. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of people who just don't practice good internet safety, right? And there's, you know, browsers and all these different, you know, just even the devices themselves, whether you're using Windows or iOS or Android, they've done a lot of work to help, you know, create these, you know, privacy sale, fail safes to make sure that people aren't just completely destroying their devices and, you know, opening themselves to the vulnerabilities. But there always is going to be a way, right? Like even with, in my opinion, you know, even if you have an older generation, it's pretty common knowledge that if some Indian guy on the phone tells you, you need to send them $10,000 in iTunes gift cards to get your computer back working, and that that's a scam, right? But unfortunately, you have thousands of people every year that fall for this. Um, so you're always going to have this group of people that need that hand-holding experience. So is it going to sometimes be at the expense of a, a lesser level of security? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it's it's kind of a necessary evil to onboard millions of people, not just hundreds of thousands of people. All right, man, I'm going to wrap this up right here because uh, I just want to tell you guys some better options for you that you could be using that we have spoken a lot about here. And I'm just going to, before I get into everyone else's options here, I'm just going to show you my options, okay? So this is my ledger, all right? Maddie told me, it was like in 2021, he's like, hey, bro, go with the Trezor or go with the Ledger, all right? I went with the Trezor, which is somewhere over there in my safe. I like the Trezor a lot, you know, and it was fine. And then I bought my brother a Ledger, and I got very jealous because it was so easy <laughs> and it offered a lot more. So I now, primary driver is this Ledger. I don't remember which one it was, but I also, I wanted to show you guys this. I also have offline storage right. team. This together gives me power, okay? Right. I can have all my passwords. I have all my my phrases. I don't have my phrases on here. I have it written down. And you guys can also use a metal sheet if you want uh, for your seed phrases. But, you know, when it comes to passwords like Coinbase, email, username, all that stuff, offline right here. I feel very safe with this. I put this in my safe. And then my crypto device right here, boom. This is, gives me access to my crypto, right? So I like this combination right here, but here are some other combinations that you could use. There's secure cloud storages. You can use a two-factor authentication to get into it. Again, like a USB drive. This is just, uh, which one was this? This is my SanDisk. This has uh, 500 gigabytes, so this is a lot of storage right here. I just know this one is meant for wear and tear, so that's why I use it, and I also store a lot of data offline. Uh, password managers, and then also the steel plate. You guys should definitely check out. I bought my brother that one for Christmas, and he got it. He's like, what is this? And it's like, oh, brother. It's like, dude, you put your seed phrases on it. You got your 24 seed phrase. So if your house burns down, you know, and you leave it out, and it, it's not going to deteriorate. It's not going to break. You're going to be fine. So that's why you have that protection. I feel a little bit vulnerable with paper right now. Maddie, any tips when it comes to this right here? Because we talk about this a lot, and this is a combo I'm using. Is this a good enough combo right here? I, it's it's definitely sufficient. Um, you know, I, I think that it's first of all leaps and bounds ab above what most people do. Uh, the one thing that you mentioned about the steel plate is a very nice benefit. They're a little on the pricey side because they are steel, and obviously the price of metals has gone up quite a bit over the last four or five months. Um, but the benefit of that is like you know house fires happen, and like they're unfortunate, and they're not like super common. But you don't want to be that person that's a victim of that, right? So um, first of all, you know. My important documents and my medals and stuff are in a fireproof safe. So if you know there was a fire, at least I'm able to re you know recover everything that's in the safe. Um, but that steel plate backup is a very nice uh, you know option because you're not going to need to access your seed phrases unless you completely forget your password or you get a new device or whatever and you need to you know reinstallize. But 
when you guys are signing transactions, you're just using the pin. So like that's really kind of like a set it and forget it one time. So, you know, investing in like the steel plate backup uh, is a good idea. Otherwise, at least paper in a fireproof safe um, so that if there is a horrible accident, you know, you're, you still have access to uh, your assets in the event that you don't have your, your ledger anymore. So, um, you know, Again, whatever you choose is the combination. Just do not keep them on a document on your computer. Do not keep them on a cloud right. base, uh, you know, whatever. Like, I, I know that we all think that it's never going to happen to us, but there's like celebrities with, you know, high levels of security on their stuff and their iCloud gets hacked and their stuff gets leaked and like game over. It's it's game over at that point. Like, it doesn't matter how much money you have or, you know, whatever. The internet already has this file and it's already being recirculated, right? Um, so just think about that stuff, guys. Like, we're not special. We're not immune. Um, always just do your best to take the highest level of security with all of your, you know, passwords and things of that nature. Yeah, we're talking about money here, and just for it's right. Ledger Nano X. I didn't, I had felt like I had to show you that, so just to show exactly what I'm using here, Maddie. I think that was great, team. So we offer, we talked about the assets at the top of the show, talking about crypto opportunities right now. Briefly talk, talk politics. Don't get aggravated at us in the comments. If you want to discuss, if you want to message me privately on Instagram, I will discuss with you about how I really feel if you care to, to know or gander. And then we talked about cold storage, actually. We just ended up, of course, Maddie, we ended up talking about cold storage. <laughs> and the smart, actually, no smart wallet, just use your ledger, all right, team? You know, so. But, Maddie, last thing we need to do for the team here is the giveaway. And, you know, so we only gave you seven days to. Uh, sign up for crypto charge for all of you that joined so we had very productive very good received shows last week and we had only three signups only three people signed up using code father and i was talking with maddie before the show and he was just telling me he's like bro dude some of these people will just take advantage of our batch content they'll take advantage of our free content here on youtube which is fine you know do whatever is best for you but some of you guys don't want to take crypto seriously. Some of you don't want to take your investing seriously, your education seriously. You want to go out with your uncles and aunts and your family members and talk about, oh, Bitcoin's doing pr pretty well right now, isn't it? And those are the kind of kinds of conversation you guys want to have, which is fine. But if you want to be a lot more serious than that, if you want to be able to trade, learn skills, have tools, daily shows, stay up to date in crypto, Join the platform team. I know we talk about it a lot, but that's somewhere you need to be if you want to be serious. And I think you're serious because you're watching the show. You know, you're taking time out of your day to watch crypto show. So, Maddie, let's do the giveaway for the team here. Let me pull cool. it up very quickly. And you know what? Let's just let's just let them know the names. We got Anthony, we got Flynn, and I have it upside down. What is it? Christian. Christian. Yep, yep. Christian. These are the three people that have an opportunity to win an annual membership to Crypto Charge. And so, Maddie, let's just do this right now. I don't know. Is there a drum roll? I hope there's a sound effect here. But oh, there we go. <laughs> is it going to be? On, is it going to be? Come on, bro. Flynn, All right, brother. let's go. Congrats. Maddie, tell him what he just got. You, my brother, have just won a free year of crypto charge. So you signed up, you gave us your info. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that you don't get charged for an entire year. So um, you're going to have access to our live shows Monday through Friday. Uh, you're going to have access to the Discord for a whole year. So ask questions, you know, be able to keep up with any trade ideas that we have outside of our long term holds. Um, you know, you're going to have access to our coin library. So, you know, as we adjust targets or adjust charts uh, regularly in there for everything else, the coin library, you have access to all of those goodies in there. You're going to have access access to our learning center and any ongoing videos that are in there, um, including the consistent investor strategies that we just mentioned. Uh, the beginners course, um, you know, and really just all the resources you need to be successful. So I'm excited to get you upgraded there. If you guys are interested in our program, it is 49 a month or 499 for the year with code YouTube. If you don't use code YouTube, you're going to get charged twice as much. So don't do that to yourself, right? Um, pay the price that you think is fair, uh, which is about 50% of that. So uh, if you guys use code to YouTube, you will get that opportunity. That also comes with a 30 day free trial. So, you know, I know that there's a lot of programs out there and they all want you to sign up right away and they all want you to just, you know, collect your money immediately. I want you to genuinely try out a program. I don't want you to commit to my program if it's not for you, which is why we give you guys 30 days free with any membership you guys pick. So you get the whole 30 days. You guys decide day 29. You're like, hey, bro, thanks so much. This is not for me. Shoot me an email. We'll get you squared away. We won't charge you a dime. But genuinely, I want you guys to try out the program. Make sure it's good for you. And if it's a good fit, welcome aboard. <laughs> Team, thanks for joining us today. We will see you this Wednesday at 2.30 p.m. Pacific for the Ask Maddie Show. So if you have crypto questions or hot takes or anything like that, leave them in the comment section down below. If you got something valuable on today's show, like those altcoin picks we we're talking about, or if you liked us talking about politics, I joke with Maddie. <laughs> Maddie's like, we need to have a political show because I end up talking <laughs> politics with Maddie all the time now. Um, 
Or if you got value with us talking about the cold storage, please leave a like. That greatly helps us. We will see you this Wednesday. Bye.